Hello again everyone, another random product review. It's kind of a trend here. I've been looking for a powerful fan to dry my one-off uh, model paint jobs quickly instead of putting them into a food dehydrator just for one piece, you know? And I've had two failures. My first Kika one broke in, uh, within a few charges and then my second cheap one broke after the first charge. So I got this off AliExpress and it's supposed to be crazy powerful, 110,000 RPM. It came in this box, which came in a padded envelope. I like to say envelope, I don't know why. And here we are, it looks like a 3D printed body. Eh, eh, at least this is cheap. I guess I could use this for something else too. I just, I just hate wasteful packaging, but I guess you kind of need that because this might break in just an envelope. So we got some Chinese, that's not gonna help me but somewhere in here here we go we got some english yeah so i'm gonna bring this when you hit focus you can pause and read that if you want well, i'm just more interested in 110,000 rpm 180 watts is 22170 batteries in there so we're talking 8,000 milliamps of uh battery capacity charges within three hours supposedly 3d printed body type c charging port 30 amp controller 15 to 20 minutes at maximum power. Now that's impressive because that Kika one only lasted like five minutes at maximum power. So this is uh, quite, well, we're gonna have to do a rundown test. That's the thing. I'm gonna have to charge this later on. Uh, let's see if it's got power. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, the inlet, the outlet, the power button is which? It's the back button. Then there's a charge port, of course. A wind speed control knob is above the power button and then six Violent mode. <laughs> Violent mode. Sounds like a video game we're going to be using here. All right. So keep in a dry environment. Charging. All right. So I think that's all I really care about. <laughs> like that's going to help me out. All right. I was reading the instructions and this is important. Do not put your fingers near that air inlet. The suction is crazy and I believe they're right. That thing will suck your fingers in there. And those blades look like knives. So, yeah, even though there's a 3D screen there, who knows if that's going to hold up. So, uh, and another thing, if you do use this as a hair dryer, if you have long hair, you better make sure that thing's far further away than your hair. If your hair gets caught in that motor, that whole thing will whip out and probably smack you in the face and or scalp you. So, those are two pretty important things. Obviously, you don't want to have it with a damaged cable you'll short circuit the thing it also does say you shouldn't leave it in the on position maybe it'll, it'll start a short circuit so when you're done using it turn it off make sure the led inside of that thing is off which i just did while i'm charge i'm charging it right now I'm buying stuff off aliexpress i don't think anyone ever returns stuff there all right let's look at this so 3d printed yeah it looks like an fdm printer you know the filament kind of printing what the heck is this? Why is this falling off? This is rubber inside. It's 3D printed on the outside. Uh, it says 21700 up. Uh, and the brand is called Huizhu? Huizhu? I'm not Chinese. I don't know. What I don't understand is why is this silicone ring here? And life is not always dark, guys. Just remember that. That's why I have an LED light above us. Uh, this slides in at an angle. And it says this is up. The thing is, it doesn't have a screen. You know, if it had a metal screen, I could understand you not trying to get, you know, random bits and stuff hitting the fan blade. But otherwise, I think it would just... Maybe, maybe it baffles the sound. We'll, we'll try it without it and see. We'll try it with it. I have the DB meter ready for us. So this texture is uh, interesting. It's a, a grain here. Then we have this uh, triangular thing here. And then we have this dragon scale kind of thing going on here. This is like a, a slide of a pistol. And then I think these might be vents. You can actually see the support structures, these tiny little lines. Those are the support structures of the filament uh, 3D printing process. So now this one has a texture as well. Uh, but yeah, you can actually see, if you look really close, all the 3D print layers. Whatever, it's interesting. Uh, this thing is magnetic. So I'm going to guess there's a magnet behind that little circle. 
and it clears all these hex bolt hex heads uh, so those socket cap heads so there must be a magnet there um, I guess there's no risk of it damaging if the winds always pushing that way uh, but you can obviously mess that up so if you if you don't put it on there I bet this cone will blow off and I gotta say, right here is not very attractive to look at, the seam line. I don't even understand why that seam line would be there if it's 3D printed like this, layer by layer. It should just all be consistent. So uh, this is some sort of print defect or something. Or that's, I guess, where it stopped and raised up the head and printed another layer, stopped, raised up the head. All right, whatever. All right. Oh, yeah, the magnet is there. Okay. So if this magnet were to fall off, it would be blown out instead of like ending up in there. You can kind of see, hopefully, in there. Yeah, you can see the copper windings of the motor, and uh, it's, it's supposed to be a brushless motor. I don't think you could have it uh, brushed and be this powerful. This fan blade looks like it's CNC machined. I can't count how many blades: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Either twelve or thirteen, somewhere in that ballpark. All right, power on. There's no light, no light. Oh, hold on. Whoa. All right, hold on. Let me get the uh, camera resituated here so you can see the decibels of this thing, how loud this is. So uh, this is just like a gun trigger. In fact, let me turn on the wind meter. And this is my standard distance now. I think if you're going to use this to cool yourself off, this would be a reasonable distance to hold it from your face. Wow. So, meters per second. We're talking... 14, 15 meters per second, and that's without the cone. But decibel-wise, it's over 100. It peaked at 100. Let's try it with the cone. <laughs> this thing's so powerful, it's crazy. Didn't make that much of a difference. I think I saw maybe 16 meters per second. It's only one, only one meter per second faster with the cone which is kind of weird. So what that means to me is a lot of the air is getting pushed back out through the backside. So I think you're, you might be wasting power for that one extra meter per second. It's causing a lot of resistance. I think you'd just be better off like this. Uh, but let's see about the noise. It's high, it was louder, 115 I saw. So it's definitely louder with the cone and only a slightly, slightly bit more powerful. Now, let's see if this actually reduces the sound. Maybe that's what it does, this little rubber ring. Um, let's see here. Let me pop that in. It doesn't lock in place. There's no ridge on the ring or anything like that. There's no recess for the ring in this on this surface either. So it's, it's interesting. They have different colors, by the way. Uh, like normal colors, I think. Even a pink one. I, I went with the crazy one color. Uh, just because I'm crazy, I guess. Oh, wait, I didn't put that in the right way. This has to face like that, flush. So you oh, put it in this slot. So let's see. Decibel wise? I still saw 114, so it didn't affect the speed. I mean, it didn't affect the noise, but let's see about the speed. I don't know if it's losing charge because it's not fully charged, but it didn't go up to 15 meters per second. So it's, let's see. It did hit 14 with this, without the cone. So maybe I'm just missing the center of that, but I almost feel like the cone is not actually helpful. It just makes it bulkier. And I don't think this does anything beneficial either. It doesn't affect the sound. And without a screen, it's not going to protect weird objects from entering there. Alright, well, 
I guess I'm just going to use it like this. I'll compact like this. All right, so what's the speed thing then? Okay, so you don't need to use that. So this is nice, the adjustable. So at minimum, it's not even registering on the, the wind meter. So you saw it hit around 15 without the cone again. And let me give it one more opportunity for that cone. Somewhere in that distance from the nose cone tip. Just shy of 17, so you can get 2 meters per second faster with the cone, it seems, in that ballpark. Obviously I don't have it scientifically aligned with the laser thing, but we're just ballparking it. Uh, suffice to say, this would blow your hair very well. I, I see people blowing off the water off their cars with these things. Um, so I guess the, I will say this is kind of cheap looking, you know. I literally see metal contacts in that gap. I kind of wish, uh, they 3D printed it in a way that this came in through the backside, but maybe it can only come in from the outside. Maybe that's the reason. I'm also wondering if these should be open. Oh yeah, I can actually see. You see that red light in there? So that support material might be hindering the wind a tiny bit. I'm a little afraid to knock it off because it might actually end up in there and you know maybe get into the bearing or something like that. I think I'll just leave it alone. But yeah, you can see a little red, uh, there's a red LED light in there. Uh, and then down here, what do I see? I see like some Kapton tape or something like that. A red cord. Let me get it. Let's get this charger. Oh, by the way, it comes with this. Oh, this might be a high amp charge cable because it's got orange inside of there. I don't know if it actually said in the manual how good this charge cable is. But let's just see about this charge cable. The light comes on. Yeah, a light does come on. It's red and white. So I'll have to get back to you on what color or if it just turns off. Maybe it turns green. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. It's going to take a few hours to charge. All right, we'll come back later. Hey guys, well, it cursed again. I was using this thing for a few times and it was working great. The problem is I can't see the LED. So I took it apart trying to uh, basically drill a hole here so the LED could shine through and I put it back together and the thing smoked. I think it must have something, I pinched a wire maybe. So we might as well rip it apart and see what's going on inside. But let me just show you. Look how thick this purple plastic is. That's probably like at least three if not four millimeters thick. So a red LED has a hard time shining through that much plastic. The only way you could really see is through this vent. So on several occasions, I just forgot to turn the thing off. And that's dangerous, and the battery drains. So that's why I want to modify it, but it's so crammed together in here. Uh, don't ever take this apart because you're gonna destroy it, like, like I did. So I took the caps off, you know, as excessive. I never did figure out what this was for. It seems absolutely un unnecessary. Here's the charging uh, type C thing here. And so here's the issue. You can't pull the battery out. I think what they did is they soldered the motor in, in this case. So this is the only slack you can get. You can move it a little that way and a little bit that way. But you can't access this whole thing to see what's going on. So, uh, man, I don't really want to clip these motor, I don't, motor wires. I think what's going on is a quadcopter motor in here and the speed controller as well. Uh, I might have to just clip right through this thing because it's garbage anyways. I want to keep the batteries. I think I could just probably replace the speed controller. But uh, the problem is I can't really do that without destroying it 
because there just isn't enough slack to get the battery out. This is such a poor design. Uh, I don't know. Also, by the way, this charge port is only held by two screws here, and yet the battery is trying to push it out all the time. There's a stop here on the back side to try to keep the board in place, but it's inherently a bad design. Uh, they really should just have a clamshell right here with six or eight screws. You take it apart instead of this one thing. Or none of this would have happened at all if they just had a, a hole right here so I could see the LED more obviously. Ah, oh, boy. All right, so. See, there's the speed controller. It's a quadcopter speed controller. What I don't know is what the rest is. There's a whole bunch of extra wiring in there because of the switches, I think. Got that. Alright. Let's put the positive first. Oh, it's already torn off, never mind. So there are those batteries. Now oh, this is also crazy. All those switches, they must have put in after the fact. I don't, there's literally a set screw. So this is crazy, the fact that how they did this. Someone had to take a really long screwdriver and somehow get a nut around this switch. You see it's worked loose. So that might work loose on its own. And then this is probably a, just a friction fit in. Wow. It is a strong body. Well, maybe not. No, look at that, it just cracked it. So if you drop this, I'm pretty sure it'll break. That wasn't, that wasn't too much force. So this 3D printer resin is not overly strong. It's an FTM thing. You see? That's really crazy that they Oh, the nut is being held by this, this edge. Oh yeah. But still, I think they ended up soldering all these wires after they put the components in or something. Because you, you saw I couldn't get any, everything out. That thing is pushed in how? So look at this. So there must have been some sort of extra slack before they pushed that in. So nothing's really trapping this in place either. That might come out on its own. This is probably just a friction fit. Yeah, so that's just a friction fit. And then that pushes in. get through here. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I don't see how they could get this switch through this opening. They literally had to have the wires on the inside first. Then they soldered the switch on and pushed it in there. So this is not, not meant to be taken apart whatsoever. So this is the motor ESC, electronic speed controller. I don't know what this is. 
I don't know. And then yeah, you got the the speed adjuster and the the full auto, full trigger. So that's what's happening. And then, well, that is this is interesting. I guess it's not a quadcopter motor. It's a uh, I don't know how to explain this. This is aluminum. This is the magnet. I mean, I guess it's a brushless motor. That's kind of cool. Maybe if I if I make a big model kit, I'm going to keep that and use it as a giant jetpack for the thing. All right. Well, you see the issues with this thing. First, you're going to you're going to basically leave it on a lot of the time because you can't see the power light. And also the charge LED was kind of weird too. It, a white light would come on and then the white light would cut, turn off when it was done charging. But the red light always stayed on. So, so that was weird as well. But uh, yeah, even if this thing did work, you drop this thing, it's broken. I mean, this is not, not a very strong resin or FDM plastic. Right? Considering how heavy this is, you know, this has a lot of mass, so if you drop it on a road or something, that's going to be an issue. Alright, well, learn from your mistakes. Don't buy something that looks like this. But the, In its defense, it was pretty cheap. But uh, I guess maybe, I don't know why people just can't design uh, a fan properly. This is my third one now. The Kika broke. The Hatari broke, and now this broke. Maybe, the, maybe this just isn't meant to be. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next Random Gadget review.